Ladies and gentlemen, a heartly welcome from the EC TV studio here from the EC annual meeting in Amsterdam. Dr. Nichols from Adelaide, Australia. Uh, he was part of the Aquarius trial. What is the Aquarius trial? Aquarius is an intravascular ultrasound study that evaluated the effects of the renin inhibitor aliscarin on disease progression in the coronary arteries and, and it, it set out to answer two questions, which was one, is there a benefit of additional blood pressure lowering agents in patients with coronary disease whose blood pressures were already at goal? And secondly, uh, was there a benefit of using a renin inhibitor? And we did that because we know that the renin angiotensin aldosterone system is an important player in the disease, and that early preclinical studies had suggested that the renin inhibitor aliscarin had favourable effects on atherosclerosis in animal models. And so what we set out to do was to enrol 600 patients with coronary disease with a systolic blood pressure between 125 and 139 millimetres of mercury. So essentially they're at goal, according to most national guidelines. And they were treated for 24 months with either aliscarin or placebo. And what we observed was that the aliscarin treated patients, they had lower blood pressures, uh, they had less renin activity as you'd expect. We saw a strong trend towards regression of atherosclerosis in the coronaries. It didn't matter which endpoint you looked at. It looked like there was a strong suggestion. The p-value was 0.08 compared with baseline. And again, the p-value was 0.08 compared with placebo. So overall, we've had to conclude that it was a neutral study. But it was intriguing that there was a strong trend towards regression. And the other really striking finding in the study was actually cardiovascular events. This is a small study. These are studies are not routinely powered to show differences in clinical endpoints. We did centrally adjudicate events in this study. And we found that there was a highly statistically significant reduction in major adverse cardiovascular events in the aliscarin group, a 50% lower event rate, which was highly statistically significant. So perhaps there is a benefit from adding additional blood pressure lowering agents to patients who we think are well controlled, but it really highlights that we need a lot more studies in this space, larger outcome trials to really tell us what is the real optimal blood pressure for a patient with coronary disease. So I think there's two things. One is uh, that you, uh, you reach to reduce the blood pressure. And the other thing, as I found out, is that you, you thought that Alaskarin would have a direct action eventually in plaque regression or uh, avoiding an increase of, of the plaque size. And this was not reached now in this trial. And now I come to uh, Dr. Telling from San Francisco, USA, and he will report about the atomic AHF trial. What is this? Yeah, so the atomic AHF trial um, investigated the new compound called omacamptive macarbal. Omacamptive macarbal is a cardiac, very selective cardiac myosin activator. So it increases cardiac performance in a way that's completely novel. Um, avoiding the increases in intracellular calcium, intracellular cyclic AMP that we know are associated with increases in ischemia and arrhythmias. And so this agent has already been tested in healthy volunteers as well as patients with chronic stable heart failure. And in those populations, the drug was very well tolerated and showed an increase in systolic ejection time that was directly related to increases in cardiac performance. So atomic AHF was a phase two study. It was a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized, um, ascending dose, sequential cohort design. And within this design, we were investigating the pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics of omacamptive macarbal in now the acute heart failure population. So um, what was the outcome in the end now with, with the dosage you have chosen? Yeah, so, so the trial um, enrolled 613 patients distributed amongst three cohorts. And within that, those patients were patients who were admitted with acute heart failure, who had already had a history of chronic heart failure, an ejection fraction that was um, below or equal to 40%. And within this patient population, the primary endpoint was dyspnea relief. And this primary endpoint was not met overall with a p-value of 0 0.0 of 0.33. However, and of interest in a small study, in the higher dose group, there was a statistically significant, anomaly statistically significant um, increase in dyspnea relief with omacamptive carbol at a level of 0.03. And in addition, when we did exploratory analyses of dose and concentration dependence relationship, there is a significant improvement at a much lower p-value uh, in, in terms of dyspnea relief. 
associated with that, we also had um, evidence that the compound worked exactly as it had in the other patient populations, which was very reassuring. The adverse event profile was nearly identical to placebo, so we did not see any safety concerns along those lines. We did, however, see a modest increase in troponins during the um, initial course. And of course, this was of interest to us. We looked very carefully and could see absolutely no relationship between the omicantive macarbal plasma concentrations, either as peak plasma concentrations or area under the curve, and these increases in troponin. So um, this still needs to be um, assessed. But overall, it was a very successful trial in terms of meeting its primary goals of investing so, in the pharmacokinetics. Thank you for all these uh, comments. Yeah. And also, I would like to summarize that also this is a quite interesting new substance with interesting preliminary data. We need more data in the future. But I see you believe in this and you will work in this substance uh, for a long time. Yes, thank so you. thank you so much. I think it was a quite interesting uh, discussion. Thank you for uh, stating your uh, comments here and telling us about the trials. And I would like also the audience uh, 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 here and uh, I say goodbye from this uh, ESC TV studio here at the annual meeting in Amsterdam. Thank you so much. ESC Congress 365 is your free access to ESC Congress content all year long.